Because at Nick's, you... You're gonna eat what I cook you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Put the knife at your knuckle. Nice. All right, not at your fingertip, at your knuckle. And then slowly, slowly, you want to make this as thin as Paul Sorvino was cutting it in Goodfellas, okay? Without using a razor blade. But, yeah, but, you know, but what you don't want to do is cut your finger off. Yeah, especially so, if you're a piano player. Yeah, especially if you're a piano player. That's it. That's what your garlic should look like. Wow, that's a nice job, right. Secundo. Better now, than I could do. I'm going to at least go for four of these babies. Yeah. At least, maybe five. Five. Always five. Five. Is five is, yeah, everything good comes in five. Yes, yeah, yeah. especially with garlic. <laughs> that's the best. All right. This might be enough garlic. Might not be enough garlic. Oh, looks good, George. We don't know. It's by eye construction. Again, there is no recipe to life. It goes. It goes with the flow. That's right. We, we improvise in you the moment. Do whatever you feel like. <laughs> like I just caught that piece of garlic on the fly. Yeah, the more juice, the better. The more bread you can suck up. That's right. Make the scarpetta. Scarpetta. All right. So here, one, two, three. And then another one for good measure. Good measure. All right. You know how to take that? Okay. Then we take the pepper. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to be. You don't have to be conservative with pepper. You can be generous with pepper. Pepper is a beautiful pepper thing. Pepper on pepper. Yeah, it gives you. It gives you. Nice. <laughs> you're a conceptual genius. No, I'm All not. right. It's, you're white on white. So now with this, we do this, we do this. Okay. Not too much. Again, you can always add, you can never subtract. Uh, just kind of do it by feel. All right? You don't want to over salt, you can always add more. Now don't be afraid when you're mixing things to get right in there and mix and mix. Oh, look at this, Judge. <laughs> what a thing of beauty. Okay. See? When people use salad tongs or whatever to mix stuff, it never really fully mixes. You gotta put your hands in it. Yeah. And you gotta like connect it. with the food, Pop. You gonna you gonna taste this, George, or you wanna need to? I'm gonna give it a little taste. Then I'm gonna give you a little taste. Mm. Here you go. I think it's more salt. Definitely. Do not over salt. The death knell of this dish is to oversalt. Yeah. So you mix, you taste. You mix, you taste. You mix, you taste. Okay. All right. A little more. Okay. One more time. Yep. That's why it's good to have the primo here. Is he's my little mix master. Yeah. <laughs> what you want to do is you, you want this to cover it and then sit at room temperature and really let that marinate. Let let it gestate. Let it marinate. This is always better the next day oh. after you refrigerate it too. But at least, you know, let it marinate at room temperature and let that garlic really roll. So we're going to show you how they do it in northern Italy. This is the base. Now, mom and dad, when they make this, they put anchovies in it. Uh, but when his mother made it, she never put anchovies in it. Oh. But I'm going to show you in... in a little variation, but this is good just the way it is. These are pine nuts, or as we say in Italy, pignoli. pignoli. Oh, these are beautiful pignoli. And on a very, 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 very low to, you know, halfway between low and medium, you want to watch these. You, you want to babysit these. Because yeah, really what happens is, is it takes them a while to come up to heat. And then they just immediately burn. The, they're, they, they are the original tipping point nut. You want them to roast to a nice golden brown. Oh, yeah. A 
Okay, yeah. see? Look, they're just starting to get a little brown. All right, keep moving. Keep moving. But what you want to do is keep shaking them up and keeping them moving. These are almost done now. See the lovely brown? But no black, no carbon. <coughs> they're releasing their oil. They, they just become a lot more flavorful when you roast them like this. Bada bing. And that's it. That's a half a cup of pine nuts right there. Wow. What's what we got here? What are you making a grab for? I was going to taste one. All right. These are golden raisins, California raisins. Golden raisins. And wow. We're going to add these to our dish. You got clean hands there, buddy? Why don't you wash your hands? Because I need my mix master. Okay. Right. And again, you know, you can always put more raisins in. Can't always take them out. Get this piece of okay, mix master, take it away. Well, those pignolis are hot. Yeah, they are. You know what? I think we could use just a little more oil. You can put any any amount you want. Taste for salt one last time. Yeah, see now that's getting good and juicy now. Alright, beautiful. Want to taste for salt? Yeah. Tastes good to me, but you might like a little more. Perfect. Mm -hmm. what it should look like. Ooh, beautiful. Dad, what's an integral part of this dish? It's the bread. And without the right bread, forget about it. Okay. So, where do we get our bread? Uh, in Finales, we go to Pasticceria. Mmm. They make their beautiful stretch bread authentic. This is made by our friend Peter Lord. Peter Lord. And, and Peter, you know, anybody that's had a stretch loaf in Central New York, Peter generally has taught everybody how to make this bread. That's right. But nobody makes it as well as he does. So if you really want a good loaf of stretch bread, you gotta go to Peter. Gotta go to Peter. He's located right behind the Sherwood Inn. There we go now. That's our little plug for Peter, but we Peter. didn't make him pay for this one because we love him. Peter, we love him. All right. <laughs> guests over, we have them hang out and we have them eat roasted red pepper salad while they watch Primo cook. And then we, and then while they're having their antipasto and I'm cooking, I get a little, you know, Prosecco. That's oh. right. We drink a little wine, we have a little pomegranate seeds in our wine. And then we uh, taste our antipasto. Beautiful. Oh, so we get a little slice of Peter's bread. This is so beautiful, this bread. And as you can see, we've got this beautiful juice in here. And you take a little bit of this, and you put it on a piece of bread, and maybe you dunk the bread, and you make it a scarpette in the, in the juice, like that, right? And you just... Mm. <laughs> Unbelievable. Nice going, George. Wow. That is good. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Thanks for watching this installment. Yes, and I want to say to George, he did a wonderful job of putting the combination together. The flavors are there and the peppers are exquisite. Well, I learned how to do it from you and Grandma. Yeah, Grandma. As you can see, and as we always try to tell you, the history of the family and all the love that our family has is in the food. Yeah. The food is just a delivery system. Right. I love you, Primo. I love you, Secondo. Arriva Durchi. And remember, when you're in Nix, you... I cook you. That's right. And sometimes me. Sometimes George. <laughs> These are good. Do you taste this? Mmm. <laughs> That's delicious. It certainly is. <laughs> Thank you.